Welcome to Canada's podcast, the number one podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. Hi, everyone. It's Bonnie Elgie with Canada's podcast. And I'm so happy today to welcome back Shauna McDonald, principal and founder of Brookline PR, one of Canada's leading boutique PR agencies headquartered right here in Calgary. So Shauna, thanks for coming back. Thank you. It's been a year. It seems like it's been a month. Yes. Well, time has flown, but everything has changed pretty much since you were last a guest on our show. And I'm delighted to welcome you back and to continue our conversation. So now I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Bonnie. So there may be some listeners who didn't catch our first interview, and I'm wondering if you can just tell us a little bit about what inspired you to become an entrepreneur. I get this question quite a bit, and I have to pay homage to my my father. I grew up uh, in an entrepreneurial family um, from a very, very early age and saw what he did and how successful he could be. And I didn't know what business I wanted to build or try to build, but I knew that I wanted to do something on my own. And um, I think it was always inherent in, in me to do that. And then just through experience with work and with school, PR really kind of fell into place for me. So when I was ready to start my own firm, my dad said, it's about time. Wonderful. And what is the meaning behind the name of Brookline PR? Is there a story behind, behind the name? There certainly is. Um, I often get asked that question as well. And people who uh, will say, do you fish like a brook and a fishing line? And I'm like, well, I do, but it's actually not the reason for the name. I went to grad school in Boston after my business degree and did a master's in communications. And I lived in the neighborhood called Brookline in Boston. And it was, you know, a few blocks from the Boston University campus. So I really felt when I started my own firm, I wanted to pay homage to where I cut my teeth in PR. After grad school, I worked in uh, Boston for a few more years, both corporate and agency side. And so the name came quite easily to me and I, it's obviously stuck. Mm -hmm. And so you recently are or are celebrating your 15th anniversary with Brookline and actually 16th. So we, we celebrated 15 in 2019. Um, we could erase 2020 and just say 15 years. I'd be happy to say that, quite <laughs> yeah. frankly. Um, but no, it has been 16 years. Mm -hmm. So can you take us on a bit of a journey through um, starting Brookline 16 years ago here in Calgary? And obviously, you've, you've enjoyed tremendous success. You've done amazing work for clients and, and really grown um, your staff complement it as well. So I'd, I'd be really interested to hear a bit more about, about how that growth progressed for you. Oh, wow. Um, 16 years ago, you know, starting on an idea, I had been with a big international PR firm. So I really knew what I loved about um, big box agency and what I felt that I could do differently. So started for client out at a, a business center, grew the staff complement quite quickly because we were very lucky to get some significant clients very early on. Um, and a, a bit of something that I, I have always said is bite off more than you can chew and keep chewing. So um, I did take risks. I did want to see where we could go with the agency and looked at perhaps doing business in different markets, Vancouver, Toronto, Edmonton. And with that, again, was successful with um, capturing some new clients. So we did want to ensure that we had the staff to match the client need and were able to grow throughout the year. So it's been very um, humbling to know that we've been able to do that over the years and work with some fantastic companies, but also some fantastic people, both internally with the team, but also on the client side as well. And so um, certainly a theme that often comes up with entrepreneurs is resiliency. And probably a word that's been used more in 2020. And, <laughs> well, other than I think it is the word for 2020. It is the word for 2020 for sure. But um, as you went through uh, the growth path and, and implemented your strategies to grow Brookline, can you 
give us a maybe a bit of insight into what were some of the um, skills or tools that you employed when you would bump into challenges and how did you build resiliency both you know as an entrepreneur and even within your team um, every organization no matter how successful it is does run into setbacks so we'd love to hear a little bit more from you on that yeah, you know, I think resiliency is such a great word, but I also think for me, ownership also comes into play as well. As an entrepreneur, you are always going to make mistakes. And the only way that you're going to get better is by owning what you've done and learning from it. And, you know, I've always tried to do that both with clients and with staff, where if something's happened, you know, take ownership of it, but also be there to um, support the staff member or, or be there and have a great candid conversation with the client to see how we can do better next time. Um, it's not easy to sometimes say, listen, I made a mistake and I need to own this. But I think the more that you're willing to kind of be vulnerable and have those conversations, it builds up character. I think resiliency comes into play, but you need to also be able to have that vulnerability to take that ownership along the way. So, um, and then at the end of the day, I think you also have to have humor. Like um, the team knows that that is one thing that I ask of them is to take ownership and to um, be accountable. And I think that then leads into what we do for our clients on a day-to-day -day basis. So for sure, resiliency, but I think accountability also comes into play as an entrepreneur because success comes from making mistakes, not just by through success and learning from it and then doing better the next time mm -hmm. absolutely well i i think that's such a good bridge into into talking about what we've seen happen this year cool. and i'm wondering how how did you have to first of all adapt your own business um in light of of some of the restrictions we now have here in alberta and, and quite honestly like around the world in terms of, of shifting into more of a, a virtual and, and remote uh, work environment. So we'd love to hear a bit about what were those early days like for you when, when you and your team had to make some difficult decisions and how did you adapt? Yeah, I think looking back in March, um, certainly the early days were difficult. Did I even know, you know how to work Zoom? Maybe <laughs> for a podcast like you, the brand Zoom came up once in a while. Like it's such second like nature now for everyone. And, you know, I'll be honest, before the pandemic hit, I was of the mind that the type of work that we do is so collaborative with our clients and so team focused that office, office culture and office, um, uh, an office based location needed to happen. Um, so we were never an agency that thought, okay, we can do this flexible, we can do this in a flexible way, we can work in a virtual environment. It just never was something that we thought about because we felt that we needed to be present physically, collaboratively, um, internally and both for our clients. So then when the pandemic hit, I think it was a really big adjustment for us, but I think we worked through it extremely well. Um, we made it happen. We went from teleconferences to Zoom very, very quickly, thank goodness. And it just became something that um, we had to get it used to. But I think the one thing that certainly helped our, our company and our brand is as much as we're considered a small business, we have a culture team. So I kind of, I connected with the culture team and said, listen, we're in a very different world and we're in a very different environment, but I want to ensure that there's some consistency throughout. So how can we make this work? And so the culture team came up with some fun ideas. So we came up with, you know, theme days on our staff meetings where it's like crazy hat day or crazy um, 90s, 80s day, which was awesome. And uh, just continued that flow because it showed that the consistency of culture can be there whether you're physically in the office or virtually at home. Right. Um, the other thing that I think everyone um, with kids can speak about is being at home between March and June, running a business, working in, a, in an office environment virtually and also online schooling with kids was extremely hard. And I think, you know, there's just much more understanding and appreciation for your staff to kind of pick things up when you couldn't. 
And I think as much as, you know, some people believe personal and professional need to be separated, I think when we turned into that virtual environment, you had to have much more of an understanding for what your, what your peers are going through and um, just be more mindful of everyone has a story and everyone's going through something different. So personal connections and personal information often is blended into professional just because people have to understand what's happening. Right. And I think I, it brought our team closer in that regard, but also more respectful for everyone having different things going on in their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, the, the lines have definitely um, blurred. And I, I think we, I've heard it said too, you know, this environment that we're in really does level the playing field in an organization. You know, there's no corner offices. There's, you know, um, no hierarchy anymore. We're just all on the same page doing the best we can. Well, Brooklyn's always been a very flat organization, but you know, I I laughed at some stat that I read where it was like, people say working virtually is much more productive. And I'm like, those people must not have kids. Because, um, yes. <laughs> you know, with, um, with, with children online uh, was extremely difficult. And I'm lucky that I have a partner and I have a husband, but single parents who who have to adapt and change i can only imagine so you have to have much more of an understanding heart and just be more empathetic for sure and i would imagine um that it was challenging not only moving your own business um online and and adapting to the new reality but What did you see in terms of of the support that clients were needing? I know you represent a a really nice broad cross-section of industries and sizes of business, but what were they turning to you for help for even in those early days? And and then as we progressed um, in in this environment, maybe longer than we had thought originally. Yeah, I think it was a bit of a cross-section because we have clients in the tourism and hospitality industries. And unfortunately, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, they had to shut down. And so because of that, they weren't making the the business that they required to, you know, need our services. So at the beginning, they were like, listen, we're going to have to not be able to work together right now um, because we simply just don't have the business to make it work. Other clients, of course, came to us in need of crises and issues communications because they had to communicate to whoever their stakeholders were that things were happening and things needed to be done in a very different way um, in terms of proactive uh, issues, communications, or reactive. For, For example, if cases were to happen, we don't have the resources internally to support that. So Brookline, can you help? And then when we started to move into phase two, um, our hospitality and tourism clients started to open up again. So they kind of came back to us and said, listen, we now need your help because people know we're now back open for business. So it was a really nice mix of, I would say, proactive, reactive communication that we were there to support our clients. Mm -hmm. And and how did you have to adapt your own services um, prior to, to Starting our recording here, you and I were talking a bit about just even how work within the media has had to change and how, you know, as a a PR firm, that's obviously one of your core services, but to reimagine how you do a news conference or Mm -hmm. even to, um, you know, reflect on, and, and this is something I learned very early on too, each member of the media is dealing with their own personal stuff. As, as you said, those stories that are what's happening in our, our personal lives, but also adapting to a remote work environment and probably mm-hmm. the biggest story for many of them in their careers at the same time. So how did you adapt maybe on behalf of clients, how you worked with the media or, or how did you have to pivot that? There were a few ways for sure. We, we conducted several uh, press conferences or media events between, I would say, June and quite frankly, up until the end of October. Um, but I think one of the first pieces that we did that was more of an easy pivot was, you know, in advance of any of these media conferences, we needed to media train our clients. So typically we'd go into the office, we would do it, you know, face to face. And so most of these media training sessions started to move into a Zoom environment. 
And the clients were very amenable to that. So I said, listen, quite frankly, most of your interviews now will be conducted this way. So the more that you understand how that works technology wise, um, in terms of lighting and backdrop and noise and feed, um, and eye contact on the computer, that's going to be important for you. So that was a quick fix for sure. And then from an event perspective, being very aware of, you know, Alberta Health Services or whatever province we're working in protocols, because I said to them, you know, your brand is everything. So if it's a 15 person private inside uh, event max capacity, we need to make sure we adhere to that. We don't want, you know, anyone on camera or being shot uh, without a mask on. We need to make sure that everyone in your uh, groups are following protocols, you know, to the T because you need to set an example because it's going to be in the media. Um, so that, and again, clients were very aware and very appreciative of that. So we did several press conferences, some with actually, you know, the premier a few times where we had to bring in one pool camera and all the other media called in, um, one photographer and everyone got the feed and uh, visuals online right after. Other ones were, again, adhering to the 15-person max capacity. And you know what? Media are so easy to roll. And they're just like, you know what? We understand it. We respect it. And they were so good to work with. So it made the, the projects and the events really easy to, easy to manage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Shauna, I'm curious. As, as we, at this time of year, often start thinking about 2021, or the next year and yes. in our plans, uh, working closely with clients to develop communication strategies and that type of thing. What advice are you giving your clients as they, they try to make sense of, of what 2021 might look like? And, and I'm thinking that, that some of those tips might be really helpful for our listeners today who are small and medium-sized business owners. Do you have a few tips? You know, it's it's hard to project too far into 2021. And so what we would typically be doing at this time of year is thinking through a bit of a 12 month strategy. And we've now been kind of saying to clients, let's take that more in chewable chunks and looks, let's look at the first quarter, perhaps the first two quarters, because we don't know what the new normal would look will look like in 2021. So for now, we've got certain protocols that we need to follow. Um, who knows when newer or different restrictions might come into place. So always being very mindful, and I would say anticipate what could happen is going to be very key and have scenarios in place so that if restrictions do come in, what does that look like from a client's perspective? How is it going to impact them? And if, um, if the world stays according to plan for the next couple of months, here's what we can be doing. So we're very mindful of uh, watching restrictions and keeping our eye in terms of how that's going to impact our clients and how that's going to impact us to service our clients. Um, but in terms of tips, I would say, listen, you need to be very mindful of what's going on, being aware of um, how that's going to be represented in the media. And um, also just continuing to encourage the communication of your brand. Pandemic or no pandemic, companies still need to service. They still need to produce a business, produce a product. It's the way in which they communicate that. And I think that's going to be important and integral for any communicator to support those brands to ensure that they're following, you know, certain, certain guidelines or what have you, but ensuring that brand message still gets conveyed. Mm, yeah, that's great advice. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. So, no problem. Just a, a couple more questions. These are maybe a bit more personal in nature. Um, uh, certainly you alluded to it earlier, just the challenges of, of um, being at home, working at home, having kids, yes. balancing, balancing um, their requirements and, and online school and all the different things. Um, I'm wondering how have you been able to carve out some balance in your life in this time? Like how, how, you know, we hear that boundaries are more blurred than ever in terms of people are perhaps even working longer hours than ever before because mm -hmm. there's not that physical separation. I'm just wondering, you know, how, how are you managing that um, while you're raising a family? I think there's a lot of, of, of entrepreneurs, male and female, that would find that helpful. You know, I'm not going to lie, it has been difficult. I would say um, between June and September, probably easier because the, the weather and the climate was just 
it drew you out to it, whether it was a walk or a run or being virtual. We were very lucky that we were able to go to um, my parents have a place in the shoe shop and we have a, a place in Fernie. So being virtual, I could at least go there and work with the family and, and just be in a different environment. I think now with the weather, we're constricted to kind of being more indoors. So it is an effort for sure to kind of get myself out of the office. And um, with the days obviously being shorter, you just kind of cocoon inside. So, you know, we made a point with the team that, you know, we, we've created a health and wellness challenge for the team. So, you know, um, it's a bit of a competition to see who's getting out, who's getting some mental health some physical health. And each week we see who's being able to kind of do so many uh, minutes of physical activity. And, you know, that was purposeful where I said to our, our culture lead, this is something that I want to be very mindful of. I want to make sure that the team feels they can take a break. They can get up from their laptop. Not everyone has an office to work out of. Sometimes their bedroom, it's sometimes their kitchen table. So let's make sure that we're rewarding them for also having some physical time and some, some breaks along the way. So it's been fun doing that with the team. I haven't won a week yet. So <laughs> that is a more physical activity, but it's, it's certainly caught in the team, you know, laughing together and being a little bit more competitive. So I think things like that are important. Yeah. Um, I think myself, I can do better, but with two little ones and two dogs, they kind of keep me, um, they make me do things outside of work. So that's helpful for sure. Good. That's good. Well, um, we often talk about just wanting to see 2020 in the rear view mirror. Um, yes. I'm curious, what is giving you hope or a sense of optimism this, in this time? Where, where do you go to or how do you, you um, build that in yourself? What is giving me hope and optimism? You know, at the end of the day, I lived... I don't know how political we want to go here, but I think we live in a, in a very phenomenal country. Mm -hmm. um, we are very lucky to have the healthcare that we have. And I have lived in the United States. I have been there when it is a pecking order of the healthcare system. And if you have money, you get access. And I think sometimes um, we as Canadians or we as Albertans take that for granted. And so because of my experience living there for almost five years and, and having to go through the healthcare system, I recognize and realize it. When my best friend lives in New York City and, you know, I check in with her all the time and she's, she is in a, in a situation that she's, you know, kind of in for some time, but she's like, Shauna, you have no idea how lucky you are. You have no idea what access you have. And. And um, I think that gives me a sense of optimism. I have to be reminded about it for sure. And she will, she'll check me and she'll remind me that I have so much more than many people do. So as much as it's been a really tough time for everyone in this particular time and, and in this country, we are lucky. And I think we also tend to forget that sometimes. Yeah, I think that's a wonderful reminder. But, but thank you for sharing that. Um, well, as we wrap up, where can people find you online if they want to connect or to learn more about Brookline? Oh, so many places. Um, obviously, our website, brooklinepr.com. We're on all social media channels. I have, I'm somewhat active on Instagram myself, Shauna BPR, both from a personal side and business side. So yeah, feel free to reach out to us or, or start following us at any time. Great. Well, Shauna, thank you so much for coming back for another visit and, and chat and, and just for sharing so many valuable tips today and, and a bit more about your journey, especially over these last number of months. It's always great to see you and uh, I'll look forward to next time. We have to do that lunch, Bonnie, one of these days. Yes, we will. Uh, hopefully by next summer, it can be on a patio somewhere. <laughs> Fingers crossed, fingers yeah. crossed. Optimism is key. Thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks again.